Hello ladies and gentlemen, Random Gamer Riven here, bringing you another indie first impressions randomized gaming video. Now in today's video I'm going to be looking at Tiny Hands Adventure and this has released on PC and Nintendo Switch. And just a disclosure, the developers Blue Sunset Games did send us a key code to look at this title on Steam. So this is the Steam version. This game does need some work unfortunately so I'm just going to go through and show you what I've played and I'm going to give some design feedback to the developers actually seeing his design was one of my fortes. So the presentation here, the, the text for the title is quite nice, you can see the little character there, that's Boris I believe or Boris, um, he's the T-Rex character. If I'm going to be honest, I'm reminded when I see him, because this game was pitched to me as if, oh, if you like Croc, because we previously done a video on Croc, so if you like Croc, you'll like this. Now, Croc and Pokemon are very inherently cute characters, and they work really well for children. This is a, a kids-based game. Even characters like Crash Bandicoot, very cute and cuddly, you want to hug them. Boris reminds me a bit of one of the Digimon T-Rexes. I think that was a Gomon, but he's not as cute as a Gomon. In fact, Boris doesn't look that attractive at all. So let's jump in with the new game. Yeah, I want to start over. So as you can see there straight off, we're going just to a uh, little text sequence here. You kind of actually wanted a little intro of him, like maybe hopping off, waking up, and then wandering down here. It's just not a smooth transition, and that's my first note the design is not smooth it doesn't flow well it doesn't move and transition together well and i think that's something that needs to be direct addressed by the developers my main crux is i think this game needs a few more months work and maybe blue sunset games will put in the additional work but my argument would be don't release this till you're actually got the finished product as much you may need to cash releasing it early just never looks good and you're always going to get a bad set of initial first impression reviews then, and then you have to rely on the later questions and people saying actually no they, they've patched it up. Of course if they don't patch this up then I think this game needs and it does need a lot of work at the minute in my opinion. So okay the entrance of the case should be around here, I better look around. That's the other thing, I'm using the um, joypad and it's giving me the arrow keys at the minute. Controls which is another issue. You can see there wandering around. So I can jump. I can slide, I can roll, in that score respect it's quite nice and in fact you've got that, he can, the cap's quite funny but he, he needs to be a bit more kiddie looking, he's not that attractive as a character, Borat, Borty, that's it. Better jump over there, don't want to wet my toes. Press spacebar to jump when actually I'm pressing A on the joypad to jump at the minute so that's I mean that might be a bug that it's just not showing the joypad prompts, but I do, it should be showing a joypad. This is a nice shiny thing, I must be close by. I mean in terms of how it looks, it does remind me a little bit of Croc. Or Croc Island of the Gobbers to give it its full name. We did do a video fairly recently, in fact I'll use a little card up the top here as I'm speaking to show it to you. So you see you can slide and then we've got the enemies. He looks tough, better defeat him fast. Use E to attack, you can defeat enemies to roll, collect 100 meters to gain extra life. So we've got the old classic 100 ring, gold rings, 100 coins as Mario and Sonic. Let's whack him. And so jump on them. So you've got, in some respects, you've got quite a lot of moves here, which is quite nice. Now I want you to pay attention to this transition here as well. So you win just a straight up thing and then we've got this screen. Now this does not look pretty, it needs a bit more work. You've got the names, for instance the names in the background here like the Water Guardian, the, the location name shouldn't be appearing until after this cutscene has played out. That's a straight up presentation. The other thing is Bortai there is actually on the slant, he should be, he's actually basically on an angle, he should be either on the plateau or he should just be back a bit so that way he's sort of sitting up straight. I mean who sits on a sort of plat raised platform at a level, it just doesn't look natural. And his tail, well it's not quite clipping through the ground but it looks like it's borderline. Okay, who seeks my wisdom? Hello, I'm Borty, I came from the village of Dinerberg, our elders sent me here, are you the fairy? See again, the opening, there should be an opening intro where you see the, the elders sending him out, it just cleans things up and just looks nice and pretty. The animation of fl 
Florelle's quite nice and she she looks quite there's there's some artistic direction here but it just needs to be just a bit more polished overall Again, the way the text is, it gets smaller. That's why I came here for. I will not let you down, Lady Florel. So again, she just the portal appears. It's just an unclean transition. You don't see like a sparkle effect of her entry. There does need to be some work on how this is sort of moving. Although I will say at least that there's a variety, good variety in locations, and at the start you get a various area select. So we've got Slippery Pass, the Lighthouse, Stairway to Alien Heaven and Ross Noss walkabout. Let's go with Stairway to Alien Heaven first. This is actually one of the quite nicer stages. So again, there's no transition screen, just a kind of slightly ugly loading. And I think this is actually slightly implemented because when I first did it, transitions were actually instantaneous, but just felt a little bit um, off. Now, the other thing is, I think you're supposed to be able to reach that, but you can't at the minute. Or maybe you've got to use the shovel because there is a, a shovel sign, although I'm not getting the prompt, but one where you can reach it is doing that. I think yeah, there should be a, sh a shovel thing you, because you do unlock items as you go but it needs to be made a bit more clearer that you need the shovel to grab that. Too many players I think will be too incentivized just to jump off the edge there. Now this stage does have some interesting design but this enemy here, he's a bit flat, he should be facing towards us and I feel he should be moving. I've just hit a TNT barrel there, so you have got a limited number of lives. You do have infinite continues though, so and you can earn extra lives as you play. Now this stage is effectively a giant staircase, but there are some nice things. So you've got like the giant cat paw, which are quite nice, they're quite cute. And again the enemy there, he just he needs to be doing something, he needs to be moving around a bit, it just feels a bit static there. Not doing anything. So you'll see there's a yellow Aurora coming from that far platform that's going to tell me I need to do something I'm just going to jump just to show you so you need the drill to interact so you do unlock equipment so there's a slight a touch of metroidvania in this which is novel but my counter argument if you are going to have a metroidvania type thing you really want the platform parents to be sort of available this they just feel a bit like you get a power up and you complete a stage and you come back here and the the actual moving between stages isn't something like Metroidvania where you have to explore, it's just reselecting a stage, it, it just doesn't feel quite right. So now I've got things rolling down the uh, staircase, so I've got to be extra careful. So there are some there are some interesting elements in here. They, they, there are some good design elements, it's just the, the level of polish I think needs more work. This stage is actually quite nice, and you see they've got the background stuff, you've got the cat paws. Ooh. Hang on, I missed that one the first time around. That's three or five there. And there's some really nice effects here, but it just needs a bit more polish. This stage is actually quite good. One, two of the other stages do need a bit more polish than others. The jumping's actually surprisingly tight. That was not what I was expecting. But the problem is the polish for some of the other areas isn't quite as neat as it should be. But yeah, the jumping's actually surprisingly tight, which is always a good sign because nothing's worse than having poor jumping. Now again we've just got that, uh, the, the, the alien just feels a bit static there and one of the problems with these type of retro themed games and this is the problem I, even as someone who works in the industry, I will say to any retro developer, you have to remember if you're making a retro themed game, you are competing against every game released on that format when it was originally released and that includes the end life games where all the developers had the experience and if you are going to make retro themed games, my argument it should be is you should always look at the end life system game, so the best of the best, and aim to compete with them. Admittedly that's a tough task, but you really should aim to do that because you are competing against those games, even if they're not longer available, people are still going to say, well this game was fantastic on the snares, I'm going to play this instead of this one, so you do have to keep that in mind. So while this certainly looks a lot better than Croc, the music isn't anywhere near as good and this is actually a much later game. I, I think the music does feel very... just... it feels a, 
a little bit disconnected, I think. The music just doesn't feel like it's connected to the game. I need to avoid those TNT platforms. You see there, the enemies, I, I, the enemies should be moving, just them sitting statically just doesn't feel right. It, they should be moving around. Admittedly, he has got the croc tail screen, which they've obviously borrowed that from croc. But the enemies in croc are always moving. This feels, they just don't, it, they, it, the enemies feel a little bit unfinished by the fact they're not moving. But I mean, you've got some nice things there, the fact the rocks are coming down. So there's definitely challenge here. And There is, they, they could, there's definitely a good building box, but it just needs a lot more polish. And the problem is, at the minute, you are competing against, like Super Mario Odyssey and the new Crash Bandicoot trilogy. Hell, the Spyro trilogy is coming out later in the year. So all these classic games are being re-released, and you are, when you make a 3D platform, you are competing against them. You are competing against Mario 64, because that is available on the Wii U console as I speak, in the virtual console section. So... There is that thing you have to keep in mind if you are making a sort of retro thing you think, oh. Okay, I'm just gonna rush it this time, just seeing as I fail. Let's try and see if I can get this done in one run. So I, I will say it was one of the things I actually had to continue. There is a, a decent challenge. This is, I mean, I'm a very, very experienced platformer and there is some challenge here. So the, the, the team building this feel like they've actually played quite a lot of platform games. They just feel like this game has been rushed out and it just needs a bit more time in the oven, so to speak. I mean, again, there's no sort of death animation for those enemies. They just sort of fall over. You want them to like disappear or vanish or turn into the little flickies as they do in Sonic. Something, they just need a bit more. I mean the cat paws look quite cute as well, they're quite nice. I quite like the fact they're just sort of reaching out. Okay, so there we go. That's that stage done. Okay, why isn't the card showing for that one? So I'll go to another stage. Show slippery pass. So nice stage. This one I actually quite like the music for. But again, you're going to see the same issue with the enemies. They're very static and they just need a bit more life. Okay, so again, that I, I fell to my death there. But the fact I've, I've the death animation occurred so quickly after you just close falling off the platform. Let's just do that again. So really you expect, if you're going to fall off a platform, you expect a character to die, fall down a little way so the platforms are out of reach. It, it looks a bit odd with them dying, him dying almost as soon as he literally just falls off the platform. So it just looks like he's literally just, you want them to like, you want him to disappear out of sight. Now as you see there, the platforming is, as I mentioned earlier, is quite solid, so it's that's good to see so I mean I'm a platform veteran and I've played quite a few games where platform controls are very slippery and just unpleasant this this plays nice I certainly don't feel like I'm slip sliding to death so just jump those that's the halfway marker again the enemy just they're, they're just too static they need to be a bit more a bit more life in them I've got the rock enemy over there, so just jump on him. Oh, just ignore him then. Now, although you can collect five crystals on each stage at, at this opening point without the power-ups, it is a bit pointless because you can only usually get four or three of them on each stage without a couple of the power-ups. In these first couple of stages, they should allow the player to collect them all. 
but from what I've seen in pretty much every stage there's always a power up square so you either need to use the shovel or you need to use the drill or something that you don't yet have and you're going to have to progress through multiple worlds in order to get it. I think I recall I'm actually near the end of this stage already. This one's actually quite a short, short stage. So the first stage is actually quite a nice one. Oh, we got Steam Achievement there. Okay, you win. So let's go to the Lighthouse now. This is another sort of windy platform one. Again, I feel you should have a little warp or something just before you, an introduction sequence animation. And it, it, it needs something like that just to show you. So again, I can't get everything because I need the drill there. But it just needs something, it just feels a bit, it just doesn't, the, the transitions and flow just don't feel right. And there would be nice, I said, an opening cutscene, we get like a, maybe the dino villagers sending Borty on his way. We should see that in games like Croc, and as I said, you are competing. If you say stuff like that, or we want to make games into this, you need to be prepared. You are competing against those games. So there's... This, that, these enemies here are a little bit annoying, they're positioned in a slightly odd place on the rocks and you do seem to die as you're approaching them, so you've got to get that swing out just right. Again we've got flying enemies here and they are a bit too overly static for my liking. And again as you see there, the, the collision just doesn't quite feel right. Certainly for the combat collision, the jumping collision, I can't really fall. That's actually very nicely put together, so I'm just going to... Yes, again, it didn't feel like I connected with the tail. I actually think the tail is a touch too short. I think it should be slightly longer. And again, I think Morty there should just have slightly cuter visuals. So certainly, I, if you're one of the designers, look at Digimon. I think it's Agumon. You want something a bit more like that. Something that's really... Kids can say, oh, how cute, I really like him. And this... But he just doesn't quite have that cuddle me look. Crash Bandicoot, you think of Crash Bandicoot and he's got a cuddle me look. Even Mario! Although he's a slightly overweight Italian plumber, he does have that you can cuddle me look. Same with Toad, same with all those characters. Even Bowser has that look. These and Sonic as well, they all have that sort of cuddle me look. This Borty just doesn't. You can just see a cuddly toy of Borty and you can just see it being very much unloved and in the corner of the room. But I think there does need to be some slight tweaking to the art direction. I mean, the environment, on the whole, the environment direction is actually pretty good. I just think there needs to be a better sort of in transitions between each stage to see like your character being teleported. Because the problem is if the presentation's a bit sloppy, even if the rest of the game's quite good, the presentation is something the player instantly sees in game, and that can really sour the experience of anyone. I mean case in point, um, Sega Rally. Sega Rally on the Xbox 360, I don't know if you're aware, was a um, was developed by an English studio. And now I actually knew a couple of people that worked on that. And basically one of the things is the presentation for that is really weird. It's just like a load of postcards and it feels really unfinished. And I remember asking because we actually I've worked with a few X8 guys who actually worked on that game. And I said, you know, why is the presentation for that a little weird? And I was directly told yeah, we were told constantly this was a placeholder menu, but they never implemented the actual final menu. And that postcard menu in that Sega Rally, I think it's Sega Rally Revolution it was called in some territories. Basically it's the 2000, I think 2006, 2007 one. It was released on 360, not to be confused with Sega Rally 2006 which video, but that had a really bad presentation as a result because basically they didn't implement a final presentation by well, by all accounts, and so it just left a bad taste in the mouth of the player because what you had was a very unfinished looking menu and that always leaves a very unfinished bad taste in the mouth, it's not just in, the, in, the, in the, the sort of eyes of the player and that's probably why your presentation should always be slick and this is the problem with I would say Tiny Hands Adventure, the presentation does feel a bit, even the HUD looking at it just feels like it needs a bit 
just a bit more polish here and there just to tidy it up and clean it up and the other thing is you can see this stage the frame rate is coming down I think when I was looking at analysis it was bound down to about 40 frames a second and bear in mind I'm on an i7 with 32 gigs of RAM and 2 gigs graphics card so I would expect this to be running very very smoothly in fact quite a lot of games that are much more powerful than this run very smoothly this this doesn't feel like it's running smoothly at all which is an issue now I could of course should of course I've got the uh, capture unit running in the background while I'm capturing via open broadcast software but the caveat is every PC game we captured we captured either via the Elgato capture card we used or open broadcast software and so that though shouldn't reduce the level of performance the performance I'm seeing in this just feels the frame rate's not ideal I mean, it's not it's it's certainly doing 30 frames but it's certainly not a smooth 60. Again, lots of areas for the drill to interact that I can't use. Probably get up to the first boss actually and then I'll finish there. Although I think I'm going to have to replay that the alien stage because the card had, wasn't there. So I need that card. Yep. I need to go through the last route of the maze. So one thing I will say is quite interesting that it goes to a top-down maze. That's quite a nice touch, the fact you change the angle. Although for me as a player it is a bit disorientating playing one way and then this stage playing another way. Now I need to go this way. But I certainly can't fault the variety in the stages. It does have a slight Banjo-Kazooie-esque, at least with the variety of all the different stages in Super Mario 64. I mean, is this as good as either of those two games I just mentioned? No, no it's not. It needs an awful lot more work to get to those standards. Now, is the boss open or has... I'm going to need to recollect the card from the Stairway to Alien Heaven. I hope that card's there. I collected it and then it's... Maybe I missed it when I re-ran this one. Okay, I've got eight lines. I'll just go for the gems this time round again, quickly. So I mean you do have a shadow there so you can see where you're jumping on this platform, you should have mentioned that before. That's a, which is always a good sign of any platform, the amount of platforms you need that shadow to see where you're going. Oh that's not right, there's a bit of an invisible collision there when I jumped off. But I must admit I have looked at a few other reviews and basically they've all been saying this is very very average and I have to agree, I mean I wouldn't, there's some nice things here but it, it just feels, I wouldn't, I just think it needs a lot more work. I think had this had three months more development you would have had a nice little platformer. The other thing, I think the price is around £11 when I checked something and it does feel like the price is a bit too, too expensive for what it is, especially considering other games you can get for the money if you've got like a Wii U or a Switch. I think it's too expensive considering the quality of the composition competition they're up against. Now it might be that Blue Sunset Games will patch up a lot of the issues in this game and in which case it might well be worth looking at a year down the line but as it is at the minute it's, it's just disappointing to see the game need, does need more work. Okay, so apologies the fact I had to replay that stage, but let's get on to the boss now. So you came to tame the power of Water Guard, you know, young fella, the hippo ain't going down easy. Yes, and I will take it. Prove me that you have what it takes, kid, or you will be swimming 
with the sharks, so that's nice. It's a kid's game, and you think like <laughs> he's threat he's he's already threatening us. So this boss stage is relatively simple, although it requires quite precision timing because basically he's throwing down, and basically you just need to jump here and then whack him. And then rather ingraciously, he there should be an animation sequence where he grabs you and throws you off. He doesn't. You just get like pinged off as you saw there. So what I've got to do is watch the shadows watch the explosions and then jump to the blocks. Now they seem to be in a falling order so you have to basically wait your turn. It's not that hard, you've just got to take your time and be a bit mindful. So he only takes three hits like many classic bosses. That seems to be the sort of classic console from three hits so the enemy's there. Oh I jumped on. See that's one thing I'd say is the collision with the enemies does feel a little bit hit and miss. So I'll give this a couple of runs. If I fail too often I'll, I'll wrap it up, but you probably get the idea. Would I recommend this? Not at present, it does need more work. I can't recommend this on Switch either, considering what else you can get on Switch or put the money towards and just say this, this needs more work. I mean, disclaimer, in a year's time it may be much more patched up and a vastly better game, and I hope it is, but at present I just can't justify the money for this because it's just... Okay, so see there, he's, he's throwing me off and it's glitched. So yeah. So this this does need more work when basic glitches like that are occurring. So, re, I mean, at least you've got a restart option. But you saw that. That was what we call a non-progression in the business where the game is still running but you can no longer progress so you're forced to either resort to a menu or in some cases resetting the console. Fortunately I can just simply reset. There are quite a few games where you don't get the reset option and then you are having to restart a whole entire level. But yeah, it just feels a bit uneasy the way he just throws you off there. Feels like that needed a touch more work there. And I'm actually tail whipping to make sure I get them. Because that so bomb one. It's a bomb, bomb. Bump, quick, bump, bump, okay. Now, again, there's some mysterious deaths like there, so one last shot. Okay, that's me falling off the platform, but the, the collision for a few of these platforms doesn't feel, I think, quite right. Again, he's gonna throw me. We've got the bigger guys. Right. Is this the fourth time lucky or fifth time? I'm gonna jump off there, jump back on that one, wait. So, bomb, bomb, so I'm gonna jump, jump, jump. <sighs> you have gotta be quick with this. This bit's quite tricky. It's not impossible. I have, I did beat him. I mean, certainly Tiny Hands isn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but there's just an awful lot of games better than it. And there is an element of polish that just needs tidying up as well. So you've got two really two really big issues here. Some of the levels need tweaking to be improved, so they make basically competing better against some of the other big platformers you've got. There's an awful lot of competition out there as well, and many gamers will probably want to go for the more recognised brands and the more polished titles. I mean, certainly even as, in terms of indie developed titles, there is a lot more out here. It's nice that they've done this sort of kiddie friendly style look, but it just needs more polish. It just needs a bit more work. I 
I mean, one thing I would argue is like here, he's just throwing boxes of TNT. Really want to see him throwing ice clouds or something. That's another thing with the sort of design. He's, he's supposed to have the power of, was it wa water? Actually, so was it water or ice? One of them. He should be throwing, he shouldn't be throwing TNT. He should be throwing something related to his power. This, the boxes just feel a bit like they've just thrown them in there. It just doesn't feel quite right. And I think, I think even the developers would agree. If he's got the water power or the ice power, he should be using those power, that power to its full extent. At the minute, it, it just doesn't feel like that. It feels like he's just throwing some asset that they just had to hand because they didn't have the water one available. And that's what I mean about polish and just tidying up and just neatly putting things together. Right, one last shot and then I call it a day. So, for the benefit of you viewers, I have been your host, Random Gamer Riven. And as always, if you like this video, and if you like our content, you can A, like the video, and you can also subscribe to our channel. And again, if you want to hear more from us, do hit that bell button. And by all means, do comment below in the descriptions. I know the indie game stuff might not be as popular as some of the retro stuff, but we do want to cover more games here on the channel. So, um, But don't worry, if you want a retro video, I'll probably be doing one this weekend. Ah, okay ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sign off for now, thanks for watching.